No? Yeah, this is Mike Kovac. Where? Lisbon. Oh, yeah. Terry? Why, you clown. Look, I I'm sorry, Mike. I, I had to talk to you. Look, I'm going to airmail you some negatives. There's a lot riding on them for me. They're dynamite, Mike, so don't take any chances after you get them. Protect yourself, old buddy. Call Mr. Ross back. Now, if you can't get an answer, connect me with the Lisbon police. That's what I said, the Lisbon police. over to Portugal after the Lisbon police called me back. Terry Ross was dead. It's Mike Kovac of New York, isn't it? And my apologies for not meeting you at the airport. The paper said you were coming directly to police headquarters. Uh, permit me. Al Alvieja. I'm professional guide in your service. Well, thanks, but I usually look after myself. There are many doors in Lisbon. Al Alvieja can open them all. Well, you're block on this one. My apologies, senor. We are very sorry, senor, about the death of your friend. It's a long ways to come for a man's funeral. I didn't come here for any funeral. I came here to finish a job. A job? I do not understand, senor. The job that Terry Ross was working on when he was killed. Now, I don't know what it was, but I'm going to find out. I'm going to take the pictures he would have taken, and I'm going to have them published for him. But aren't you assuming a great deal, senor? Your friend's death may have been a crime of passion. No, Lieutenant. Terry phoned me in New York, said he was sending me some negatives. He said that they were dynamite. I think he was killed because of them. These negatives, did you receive them? No. I left New York before they could get there. But I asked my father to check my mail for me, and I'm supposed to call him at 9 o'clock tonight. Senor Kovac, how well did you know your friend? How well did I know Terry Ross? Mm -hmm. We were buddies in a war together. We were combat photographers. We carried cameras instead of rifles all the way from Omaha Beach to Berlin. Yeah, I guess I knew Terry Ross about as well as one man can know another. Then I suggest that you leave Lisbon on the next plane. Leave Lisbon? Why? Because it would be better for you, senor. I don't know what you mean, but I'm not leaving. Oh, don't worry. I won't get in your way. That is not what worries us, senor. All right, we have asked. You have refused. Then let us talk about this job that senor Ross was working on and that you intend to finish. You know what it was? Yes, we know all about it. The facts are this, senor. For some time now, this city has been the headquarters for a very large and efficiently operated espionage machine. Specializing in industrial secrets. Espionage? I knew Terry was onto something big. But gathering such espionage information is one thing. Disseminating it to waiting buyers throughout the world is another. So a very simple, yet very clever plan was hit upon. A courier that no one would suspect. In short, a working press photographer. Now, just you wait a minute. If you're trying to tell me that Terry Ross was that press photographer, you've never been more wrong in your life. You're entitled to your opinion as we're entitled to ours. If you knew this about him, then why didn't you blow the whistle on him and stop him? Because we're after bigger game. And so am I after bigger game. Let me explain something to you gentlemen. 
To tell a story with a camera, you sometimes have to stick your neck out. Now, it's happened to me and every other guy in the business. If you're lucky, you come out with your skin and your pictures and you're a hero for one issue of a magazine. But if you're like Terry Ross, a bullet stops you in your pictures and you're a dirty word. I can't let that happen to him. I'm going to prove that you gentlemen are wrong. I hope you can, senor, for your sake. And I wish you luck. Any help or information I can place at your disposal? Well, sure. I'd like to go through Terry's rooms at the hotel. All right, I will get you a key. Ah, uh, Senor Kovac, we meet again. Big coincidence. I didn't know the Lisbon police allowed loitering around in their buildings. Well, I'm a very special case. You see, I have connections. It's my stock and trade. Now, when I read in the newspaper that Mike Kovac was coming to confer with Commissioner Costillo, I said to myself, whatever happens to Senor Kovac, it won't be dog. You're standing in my way again. Senor Kovac. I knew your friend, Terry Ross. You should have come up with that answer first. Come on, get in. Sure, some set up. I never saw a hotel do anything like this for a tenant. The friend was more than a tenant. He spent a great deal of his time here. Matter of fact, I think most of his furniture was his. Well, you seem to have known Terry Ross pretty well. Suppose you prove it. Terry Ross is dead, how? That's your problem. You set yourself up as an expert on Terry Ross. All I'm asking for is a little proof before we go any further. Goodbye, senor. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you did know Terry Ross pretty well. You know, I was a sucker for that trick every time. He taught me judo. He also told me about his friend Mike Kovac. I could never see that one coming. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, I guess you'll do, Al. Suppose we take a look around, huh? Terry's wife? I didn't know he was married. How well did you know your friend, senor? I was packing some of Terry's things when I heard the noise and I got frightened. Oh, it was Mr. Alviel and myself getting better acquainted. I'm Mike Kovac. I'm sorry I roughed you up. I would know you from your picture and from what Terry used to tell me about you. You know, it's funny. He never told me anything about you. Unless he was holding you out for a big surprise. He'd do that. Yeah, that sounds like him. When did you get married? Nine days ago. We had a week together and then he had to come down here. You didn't come down with him? No, I had to stay in Paris a few days. My contract with Dior. You see, I'm a model and there was the fall showing and it was necessary to find a replacement. Oh, but we spoke to each other every day. On the telephone. Mike, why was my husband murdered? I don't know. I sure wish I knew the answer, Renee. Was he doing anything bad? Why do you ask that? Well, the police, they picked me up at the plane and all morning long they questioned me about Terry. Oh, I suppose that's just routine. Routine? The questions, Mike, were not routine. They made me feel as if I was a wife of a criminal. I knew Terry such a short time, but... Oh, now, you forget about the police. I spoke to Terry on the telephone. He said he was going to send me some negatives. I'm calling my father in New York tonight about 9 o'clock and find out about them. And I'm sure they'll explain what this is all about. Meanwhile, I'd like to dig up all the facts I can on Terry's activities. I want to see anyone that Terry knew. Can you take me around to his hangouts? If you don't mind slumming, 
Uh, Terry Ross was a man of unusual tastes. In a quick succession of nightclubs, Al proved that Terry Ross was a great one with the ladies. And that wasn't what I wanted. Uh, Lily wants on the biggest casino in Lisbon. And you said you could open any door in Lisbon. If that's the best you can do, you're a fake. There's one man in Lisbon who will know anything about this. Well, then that's the man. Can you set it up? It's a hard nut to crack. You work on it. It took Al an hour to arrange a meeting in a villa on the outskirts of town. This was the big man of underworld Lisbon. Unknown to anyone by name or appearance. But he admitted knowing Terry Ross very well. Senor Ross was working for us on a very confidential level. Well, you're the people that peddle all the top secret information that you can steal to the highest bidder. Did Senor Ross tell you that? It doesn't matter who told me. It's a fact, isn't it? That somebody in your happy little group tumbled onto the idea that Terry was playing you for suckers. He was going to expose the whole operation with pictures when he was ready. That was why he was murdered. I am moved by your logic and your loyalty to your friend, Senor. Senor Ross had been with us for some time. He was bought and paid for. Lion. Come on, El. Stop it. Next time, you curb your enthusiasm for the realistic, my friend. I apologize for Enrique, senor. Get him out of here. What are you going to do with uh, Kovac? The plan hasn't changed. Within the next hour, I'll know whether the missing negatives arrived in New York. But if they did, Kovac must be killed. If they didn't, and then I'll convince my heroic friend that his cause is hopeless. And he belongs in a plane bound for New York. He wants Kovac is out of the way. The Ross investigation dies for lack of evidence. But you cannot buy the police, senor. The police can't buy a suspect. Problem solved. get back here. I brought you. After I convinced those people that you were just an impulsive youth that didn't belong at the bottom of the Tagus River. Oh, thanks. It'll be on my bill. I convinced the gentleman that you'd be much less troublesome in the future if you documented statements. Uh, he gave me these photo stats of bank account signature cards that Terry Ross signed. Now the bank accounts will be easy to verify. Anybody can open up a bank account. Use any name they want. Who would go to the trouble of opening up bank accounts in Geneva, Naples, Madrid, just to prove a point to Mike Kovac? It could be forgeries. Your blind devotion to this man is a beautiful thing to see. That must be a New York call. I uh, took the liberty of placing it for you. I knew how important it was. Hello? Yes. Yes, he's here. Hello? Is that you, Pop? Mike! Such a wonderful thing. I can hear you as if you were in the same room. Yeah, well, listen, Pop. Did you check my mail? Yes. I have it right here. Well, uh, is there any of them with a European postmark on it? Lisbon, maybe? Nothing, Mike. A few bills. You're sure, Pop? That's all. All right, now look. If anything like that shows up, I want you to wire me at the Lisboa Hotel. 
Lisboa Hotel. Yes. And Mikey, take care of yourself. Yeah, all right. Goodbye, Pum. Nothing? No, nothing. The negatives must still be here. Well, if I could prove to you that Terry Ross was actually working for this organization, it would be quite obvious what happened to the missing negatives. His murderer took them after Terry Ross tried to use them as blackmail. I doubt that very much. Will you step into the other room with me, please? See, I took the liberty of asking Senora Ross to go through her husband's personal papers. Now, we might find a copy of his signature, and we can compare it to the one on the photostats. I'm afraid I hadn't had any luck so far. These are little reminder notes Terry wrote to himself, but none of them are signed. Well, maybe he stored some papers or canceled checks or something in the bedroom. You mind looking in there? I've been looking through these books. Sometimes a man will write his name on the front page of a book he favors and wants to keep. Here's one. Let me see those photo stats. Well, I can't believe it. You've got to. But not Terry Ross. Now, it's often true that we have a blind spot for those we love. Now, you built a picture of Terry Ross that wasn't entirely true. I guess you're right, Al. About time I stopped kidding myself. But it's funny. Terry Ross, a guy who could do no wrong in my book. I'm sorry. I couldn't find him. What's the matter? Well, I'll try to explain. Al, would you do me a favor? Go down to the desk and see if they can get me a ticket on the next plane to New York. And while you're at it, you might as well figure out what I owe you. Got a special bargain rate all this month. You better sit down, Renee. I don't know how to tell you this. I can hardly believe it myself yet. I flew to Lisbon, a photograph, a kind of eulogy of a friend. I'm going home with a, an expose of a total stranger. The same guy, Terry Ross. I don't understand. Well, you'll learn it from somebody else. I might as well tell you. The police were right about Terry. No. No. I've been telling myself that all night. And I can't anymore. There's just one question. What do I do about it? Do I break the story and try to salvage what little honor I can for the other photographers who could be tarred by this brush? Terry said you were his friend. His best friend. Well, he forgot that before I did. Mike. You do the story, Mike. The way Terry would expect you to. I love him. No one can change that, even Terry. <laughs> to me in a hidden camera. Oh, 
looks like I was quitting on Terry too soon. This is what we call a remote camera arrangement. You know what it is? No. Well, if you want to take a picture of somebody without them knowing it, that they're cagey and suspicious and expect a hidden camera, well, you take a camera and hide it in a fairly obvious place. It's like the bookcase right over there. But then you have this remote, this little baby right here, hidden away in a safer place. You mean Terry knew someone was coming here to kill him? No, no. My hunch is he had the hidden camera set up to take these negatives that he was sending to me. The ones the killer came to get. You know, there's a chance that Terry got this guy's picture. You give me a few minutes in Terry's dark room and we'll soon find out. Senora, you have to hurry. You just have enough time to get to the airport. Well, you better cancel it. As I came in, Senora Ross told me about your discovery of the hidden camera and the missing negatives. It's fascinating, the possibilities. But is it worth missing your plane to prove the obvious? What's that? That your friend was shot. A dead man can't take a photograph. Well, he got a photograph, all right. It's in this last negative. We close the door and turn out the light. Soon know the answer. Very interesting. Make a print. Unfortunately. So you killed Terry Ross? Why? He betrayed me. I trusted him all the time he was working against me. Now, wait a minute. Does what you're saying mean he wasn't a crook? He was dishonest. He pretended to join my organization, and all the time his real motive was to expose me. That is dishonest. And to think you almost convinced me that he belonged to your rotten organization. And I wanted to disillusion you about your friends so you take your plane from Lisbon and forget about the entire matter. Now it's too late. Don't make any fast moves, senor. I might have to pull this trigger. Your friend's widow is in the next room. You'll be very careful. I'd hate to have to shoot her. What was in the film? It's a very interesting discovery, senora. We're taking it to the police. Does it change anything of what you told me? Rene, you forget anything I ever told you. Please, senora, look, we must hurry now. The police, you understand. Whatever happens, or whatever anybody ever tells you, always remember, Rene, that you were right. You know, while you were in the dark room, I sat here remembering how I met Terry, and I had decided to forget what you said. Senora. Please, now, the police, you understand, we must... Shut have... up. There's not much more you can do, but listen. Rene, you had more faith in Terry than I did. And I'm very glad of that. We can't stand here all night. Let's go. Terry do that same thing once. Listen, Renee. I'm going to be busy for about an hour here with the police taking pictures of that sort of thing. If you want to go back and freshen up, I'll pick you up later for dinner, all right? Thank you for everything. Maybe we can drink a few toasts to our memories, huh? <laughs> 